Good day, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this second day of August. We have already gotten through the first day, and now we're going through the second day of August, 2023. And today's topic is titled, What Do We Deserve? And I'm not sure why they didn't put a question mark here, but uh, it's just a statement. Uh, so what do we deserve? And if you're uh, honest with yourself, you'd say you deserve to die in your sin and perish. And, and uh, But thank the Lord that Jesus died for us and took our place so we could be saved. And that's why you need to trust him as your Lord and Savior so you don't have to die in your sin and get his righteousness and be saved and have eternal life. So we don't have to um, get what we deserve. So, amen. All right. So we'll get started here on that in a few minutes. First, I'd like to greet you as always. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior today, if he's not already. And uh, today is the day of salvation, as it says in the Bible. And uh, not to boast thyself of tomorrow, because you know not what a day may be bring forth. And today could be your last day on earth. If you were to step out into eternity today, where would your soul go? Would you go to be with Jesus in heavenly places? and Or would you go spend eternity in hellfire, uh, burning for all eternity? Mm, it's not something that uh, any of us want to do. <clears throat> and uh, so hopefully you'll get saved and trust Jesus. And then he'll show you how to live while on this earth and after you're saved. So praise the Lord for that as you desire to live for the Lord and love him more each and every day. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to start with today's scripture song from Psalm 33, 6. So press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. <clears throat> Psalms 33, 6. By the, by the word, word of the Lord, Lord were the heavens made, and all, and all the, the host of them by the breath of his mouth. That's right. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them. By the breath of his mouth. Amen. <clears throat> that would be God that's being spoken of there. And uh, so, amen. <clears throat> All right. In Psalm 33, 6, I believe that's a Psalm of David. So double check here. Most of these are Psalms by David, King David. So, Psalm 33. Three. Let's look here. All right. Well, there is no. Uh, doesn't say who wrote it, but um, most likely it was um, David that wrote it or somebody else. <clears throat> but it's got uh, 21 uh, verses in it, and uh, verse one verse says, "Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright." Amen. And then so on and so forth. So you can read that on your own time. I encourage you to read. The Psalms and then read a proverb a day. All right, so before we move on, uh, there is um, something that Brother Dean wrote on the bottom of the first page here from the Scripture Songs in August, and it says, Think about the words as you sing, and we should think about the words as we sing, and as we're reading God's Word, we should think about the words and understand what they're saying and what God's saying to us and all that. So, all right, sorry about that. All right, sorry. <clears throat> okay, so we'll put that aside there. And we'll sing those again towards the end of the broadcast. Let me get a drink of water here. <clears throat> All right, so now we'll go ahead and get into the topic for today. And this is titled, What Do We Deserve? <clears throat> and uh, the author today is UP. That would be the initials for UP. That would be the initials for, where are you? Okay, not seeing one here. Let me... UP, there we are. That would be uh, Brother um, Brother Uz Uziel uh, per Perales, 
uh, Dean of Ministry, Providence Baptist, or yeah, Providence Baptist College in Elgin, Illinois. So <clears throat> I'll read what he wrote today on this topic of what do we deserve? <clears throat> Amen. And uh, we have here Psalm 103, verses 8 and 14. And it says here, the Lord is merciful and gracious. Hallelujah for that. Slow to anger, praise the Lord, and plenteous in mercy. So he's all of those things, praise God. And of course, we know that he's uh, um, he's just and right and uh, has wrath and will pour wrath on this earth one day. But he is um, all these things first and he doesn't want any to perish. So that is why he's always long-suffering, gracious and merciful to us <clears throat> so again the lord is merciful and gracious slow to anger and plenteous in mercy for he knoweth our frame he remembereth that we are dust right we are dust and when we start getting puffed up and think we're better than somebody else or even even think that we're some kind of god or something <clears throat> we need to humble ourselves and realize who the real god is amen and that's psalm 103 verses 8 and 14 and so let me read you what um, the author here wrote today on this topic of what do we deserve. He says here, writes here, the early verses in this chapter of scripture truly showcase how good God is to us. And the latter verses clearly define our condition before a holy God, sinners and dust, right? So <laughs> sinners and dust, we uh, came from the earth and we'll go back to the earth. And, <clears throat> and if you're saved, you're soul will go be with uh, Jesus and if not you'll die in your sin and perish in hellfire so and that's what we all deserve but praise the Lord that uh, the Lord doesn't give us what we deserve and he has all these things to us praise God all right continuing on it says as we grow in grace it is so easy for us to forget what we are and from where the Lord saved us yeah so good thing to um, remember uh, what we were at one time and what the lord saved us from and <clears throat> right good to remember that and so continuing on he writes this forgetfulness can cause us to develop an entitlement attitude right it's saying being prideful an entitlement attitude thinking that we deserve more than what god has given us who <laughs> and we don't deserve anything <clears throat> but praise the lord for those extra blessings and things that god gives us and of course he says the only Thing we really need is food and raiment and everything else is just bonus <clears throat> and uh, so we got to make sure we um, don't develop this entitlement attitude thinking we deserve more than what God has given us we can feel that God's will for us is too mundane and we deserve more recognition <laughs> right really we don't <clears throat> and it says our thoughts wander to how much better we could have done if God had put us in a different place and it shows in our attitude and service for him, right? Sure does. We then feel he is fortunate to have us in his work when uh, it's a privilege <clears throat> that we are able to do his work and he doesn't need to use us for anything. And he could do it all by himself if he wanted to. But praise God that he uses us as we want to be used. So we shouldn't get puffed up when he is using us and thinking we're better than some other Christian when we start um getting uh these blessings and and things from the lord because we're doing his work and uh starting thinking well i'm more spiritual well, look what i'm doing i'm doing all this and what are you doing nothing <laughs> and we get to being like that so we should uh, be careful be careful be careful about that and keep humble a humble spirit <clears throat> and uh so continue on it says how quickly we forget what god has done for us yeah how easy it is to think too highly of ourselves. The psalmist humbles us <clears throat> with this reminder in verse 10 of Psalm 103. He hath not dwelt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. <laughs> wow, he writes, yeah, wow. <clears throat> All that we deserve is to burn forever in hell for our sins. That is right, like I was just saying. <clears throat> so that's what we deserve. If God never does anything more than redeem us, he has done far more than we ever deserved. Amen to that. <clears throat> if God never 
gives us anything more than his son on the cross and eternal home in heaven, we are far richer than we could ever deserve. What do you deserve? <laughs> Nothing. Don't deserve anything. But praise God for, for this, and this should be enough that we have eternal life and be able to have a home in heaven and be with Jesus for all eternity. So that should be enough for any of us. <clears throat> but we tend to want more, 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 and and uh, when really we don't need any more. And the more we get, the more we tend to forget about what God has done for us, like the author said here. So let's uh, ponder on that and meditate on that for a while. Mm. Ouch. <laughs> right? Okay, so that is the end of the Baptist bread. Good uh, devotional there to remind us um, what we deserve and um, what God has given us in replace of um, what we deserve. <clears throat> so praise the Lord. Okay, so today is church day, so no uh, devotional, but we are still going through uh, the second week of truthfulness continued. And today is day 179, church night. And then we'll read some fight on stories here. And the uh, passage for today for this church night is Ephesians 4.25. It says, Wherefore, put, uh, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. <clears throat> so that is the passage. And so only one hymn today. And I'll grab the fight on book and we'll read these. I'll read these fight on stories for you and you can listen along if you have a copy of the book you can follow along in the book if you're able to so let's go here and we're going to start on page 178 and with this uh this uh little uh, letter here uh, washington's mother's farewell <clears throat> it says here at 85 years old she lay dying when he last came to see her he had just been Elected the first president of the new United States. The people, madam, he told her, have been pleased with the most f flattering unanimity uh, to elect me to the chief magist uh, magistracy of the United States. But before I can assume the functions of the office, I have come to bid you an affectionate farewell so soon as the public business can be disposed of, I shall hasten to Virginia, and, but his mother interrupted, you will see me no more, my great age and the disease that is rapidly approaching <clears throat> my vitals warn me that I am not long for this world, I trust in God, I am somewhat prepared for the better, but go, George, fulfill the high destinies which heaven appears to assign you, go, my son, and may heaven's and your mother's blessing be with you always. Washington's mother's farewell. Hmm. So that was uh, that. Now we'll get into the first story from the Fight On uh, book, Volume 1, by Samuel Gipp. And this is titled, A Resurrected Army. It says here, despite George Washington's personal courage and military ability, the young colonial army had lost every battle so far in its attempt to establish a free nation in North America. Now the winter of 1777 was upon them, and General George Washington had chosen Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, for his winter camp. History has well recorded the deprivation these brave, dedicated men suffered that winter. The temperatures were well below freezing, and the snow was always deep. There were no buildings to house, the army so they were forced to battle the elements as they built themselves primitive log huts in which to winter the brutal uh, to in which to weather the brutal winter and many men stumbled through the snow with blood soaked rags tied around their frozen and bleeding feet some had no shirt no trousers no shoes nothing but the clothing that god gave them at birth mm. what or when a man had guard duty, all the men in his log hut would gather whatever clothing they could, could so he could would have a semblance of a uniform. In the stagnant air of the closed-in huts, disease prospered, and men lay sick and dying everywhere. Washington knew that the future of his army and his young country was uh, to be decided this bleak winter. Things looked Hopeless, the great general was seen to ride off into the forest. 
There, a farmer noticed him climb down from his saddle and kneel humbly on the snow-covered ground and bow his head as he sought the God of heaven who, to deliver his army and his country. That prayer was answered. Despite the brutal conditions that winter, the 11,000 men chose to remain to fight and even began a radical retraining under Major General uh, Friedrich von Steuben. Uh, hungry, sick, bleeding men stood in the snow in bitter temperatures and drilled. They learned military discipline and tactics from the young Prussian. Then, when June finally came, they left their cruel winter camp and engaged the British at Mon Monmouth, uh, New Jersey, and won. They had decided to fight on. <laughs> Amen. And the prayer of George Washington. So this is the prayer of George Washington. He prayed this. Almighty God, I beseech thee, my sins, remove them from the, thy presence as far as the east is from the west, and accept of me for the merits of thy son Jesus Christ, that when I come into thy temple and com compass thine altar, my prayer may come before thee as incense, and as thou wouldest hear me calling upon thee in my prayers, so give me grace to hear thee calling upon me in thy word for his sake, who lay down in the grave and rose again for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hmm. Well, that's quite a prayer from George Washington. And so now we'll move on to this uh, quote by Patrick Henry. It says here, it cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians, not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ, Patrick Henry. Hmm. And now the next story on page 182, the B-24 glider says here, Captain Carlton Clayborough uh, B-24 dragon wagon was attacking a factory in Munich uh, that built German FW-190 fighters when flat uh, tore the right side of the cockpit open, wounding his uh, co-pilot and destroying the instrument panel. Suddenly, engine number one took a direct hit. Claybro, Claybro uh, and his crew were two and a half hours from their base in England. He knew they would never make it, so he tried to reach his alternate uh, field in, in Conia, Italy, 30 miles beyond German lines, his remaining three engines ran out of fuel. The co-pilot was too badly hurt to bail out, and Captain Clayborough uh, refused to leave him behind. Clayborough uh, spied a fighter field and elected to try to set the ship down. The field was too short for his heavy bomber. At the end of the field was an embankment and then a deep ditch. As he drove his four-engine glider for the field, number four engine burst into flames. He flared the heavy weight out, um, slammed it, in, it to the runway, and stood on the brakes. He brought the wounded ship to a stop ten inches from the embankment. Fight on. Oh, wow. All right. So now the third and final story for today. 200 versus thousands. On the frigid night of November 27, 1950, Captain Milton Hull's D Company, 2nd Battalion, 7th Regiment, USMC, was ordered to Hold Hill 1240. Hull's command post, CP, was situated right in the middle of his area. About 10 p.m., thousands of Chinese Communist soldiers smashed into Hull's 200-man com company. The Chinese were so numerous that they were unstoppable. They simply overwhelmed the line and rushed through. In minutes, they were at the CP where Hull took a bullet through the shoulder but continued to lead his men. The Americans had to hold uh, or the CCF soldiers would penetrate to the battalion artillery and a disaster would ensue. Hull pulled his remaining 40 men back to the southern base of the hill. The Marines were still eager for a fight. They attacked uh, back 
up the hill into the mass of Chicom troops and drove them from their positions. Huddled at the top, Hull's men threw grenades down at the now counter-attacking Chinese. Suddenly, a Chinese hand grenade landed in Hull's foxhole. A sergeant jumped on it, giving his life to save the command element. Um, next, a Chicom soldier uh, jumped onto Hull's back and his runner, Private Walter M Minard, uh, shot him off. Uh, another grenade went off, peppering Hull's face with bits of shrapnel. Through the night, Hull and his re remnant uh, fought grim and desperate individual battles, but they held. In the morning, a relief force arrived, and Hull, covered with blood, led his 17 surviving Marines down the hill on a carpet of Chinese bodies. They had held. They had saved the artillery. The Marines still owned the valley below. Fight on. Hmm. Oh, so those were three good stories there. All right, so next time, let's see here. So next time we'll do three more stories, uh, starting on page 184. And the first one is titled, The Trek of P.J. Pretorius. And that's the first one. And then we have uh, um, this uh, thing on this poster here. It says, 1860 poster advertising job openings for Pony Express riders. So I'll read you that, and then uh, the story after that is titled A Determined Young Man. And then the third and final story for that, uh, um, for the next uh, time, will be Keep the Lights Burning. So those will be the three stories for uh, next time on Sunday. So, all right, and that's from the book Fight On in Volume 1 by Samuel C. Gipp. And now I'll go ahead and get into the hymn, and we'll do today's hymn, and then do the scripture songs again and then we'll wrap it up for today so okay so make sure that's on repeat and we'll grab the hymn book and i'm not too familiar with this one either so this is titled tell what the savior has done amen and this is hymn 453 in the psalms and hymns and spiritual songs book another testimony of salvation hymn a spiritual song and this is by jacob bauer 1786 to 1874 from the boston handle and Hayden a Society Collection of Church Music, 1823. No story for this one, so I'll try to listen to this first. All right. Speak 
While we try to assist you by prayer And the angels above will rejoice for to hear Amen Alright, that was a pretty good hymn there and now let me give you the references, and then we'll move on to the scripture songs. So, the first um, stanza, we have 2 Corinthians 1.4, and then Psalm 119.50, and then Proverbs 28.1, and Psalm 66.16. 6, uh, stanza 2 is Psalm 41-2, through 2, Psalm 38.4, uh, James excuse me, James 1.2-4, and Ephesians 1.15-16. And then stanza 3 is Acts 14.27, Colossians 1.9, and 1 Peter 1.12. So no story for this one. So put that aside there and grab the scripture song book and we'll sing these scripture songs again. And of course, like I said here at the bottom of the page, it says think about the words as you sing. And also think about the words as you're uh, reading God's word and take them in and uh, understand what... The Lord's uh, saying to us when he's speaking to us through his word. Psalms Amen. 12, 6 and 7. The words, the words of the Lord, Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Right. The words of the Lord are pure words. As silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever, purified seven times. Words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them. From this generation forever purified seven times. From this generation forever purified seven times. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Alright, now today is one more time. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. The word of the Lord were the heavens made. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth right okay so that is it for today's broadcast but before I go let me give you tomorrow's uh, scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and Daily Strength the Devotionals, and then the hymns for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the 3rd of August, and Proverbs 22.15 is the scripture song. It says, Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Yeah, right. So that's that uh, scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic will be titled, It's the Devil That Hinders Us, right? And uh, the devil and, of course, the flesh. And the devil can't uh, be everywhere, of course, but the flesh is everywhere, and you are where you're at, and and you can't uh, get rid of yourself, and you're going to have this flesh to deal with. Um, and then, of course, the world is always enticing us, so we have that uh, those three things, the, uh, the flesh, the devil, and the world, and um, 
those things are uh, always trying to get the best of us. So let's take heed of that, and that'll be tomorrow's uh, topic. And then Galatians 5, 7 will be the passage. So that's the Baptist bread. And then the daily strength uh, topic for tomorrow, as we're continuing through this second week of truthfulness. And tomorrow is 180, day 180, Thursday. And it's titled, Wearied with Lies. And we have the passage, Ezekiel 24, 12. And so that will be uh, tomorrow's uh, topic for truthfulness continued, the second week of uh, this topic. And then the um, song tomorrow is Tell It to Jesus. So that's a good hymn, Tell It to Jesus. So that would be the second hymn that we do tomorrow. And then the first hymn will be titled uh, Whosoever Meaneth Me. So Whosoever Meaneth Me. And this is um, hymn 454 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. Another uh, testimony of salvation hymn. There's been a lot of these. Uh, no story for this one, but uh, that'll be the first one. And if you want to get a copy of the hymn book and the Daily Strength Volumes 1 through 4 books, they're available on MelodyPublications.com as the website. And then the Fight On book is available on Daystar Publishing Company, uh, their website. I'm not sure if they have a website. They might. And if not, you can look Brother Gip up on the internet and look up his books and find out where you can order them at. And uh, amen for him and those books that he's written. Um, and then the Scripture Song book and CDs are available online at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, Missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. And then the script or the Baptist Bread book in is available to get a subscription going by going to uh, baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And that second website has other books available to order if you see any you like there. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God, is the first book we're supposed to be getting into and reading it and studying it and praying to the Lord to have him show us what he'd have us to see as we're studying his Word and learning how to be more Christ-like and have a better relationship with him. So it's all about Jesus. Amen. So let's humble ourselves as the devotional said today in the Baptist bread and not get prideful and forget the Lord and what he's done for us and always remember what he's done and what we do deserve and praise the Lord that we don't get what we deserve and uh, not to be thinking that we deserve more than what we have. <laughs> right? So, amen. Okay, so that's it for today and thanks for watching and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye for now.